So, I have been working on James Webb Space Telescope for almost, almost 15 years, during which I gave a lot of talks and, and interviews, and I was always asked to, to tell stories, interesting stories, and somehow the most entertaining ones were space mission failures. And okay, if you are an engineer on that program, maybe it's not that entertaining, but uh, long story short, so if you have a lot of parts together, working together, millions sometimes, millions of parts working together, it's very easy to make a mistake. Even just forget to test something, or even consider, or just make a, a documentation error. And these mistakes are sometimes so small, so, so human. And telling more and more these stories made me think. Why? You will get it at the end of my talk. So let's talk about stories. So the, the very first one is from the 70s, and it's a very uh, eight and nine missions. This was the mission of, of uh, Soviet Union to land on the very, very hostile planet of Venus. It's so hostile, so the temperature is scorching high. It's enough to melt lead. The pressure on, on the surface is 100 times of the pressure what we have here. And if it's not enough for you, acid is raining from its clouds. So it's pretty hostile, right? So, but we are curious. We want to see how it looks like if we were there. So they put cameras on. And, but if you have such an environment, you want to protect these, these, these very delicate lenses. And so they put caps on, very similar to, to your camera. So when you, when you want to make a picture, first you remove it, you know the. And there was a very small mistake, a very small mechanical failure, and this was enough to have one of the lens caps stay on, on both the eight and nine. But if you're an engineer, you go back to your drawing board, and you work really hard. And this is what they did. And it, of course, it made a, a very big difference on the next mission. None of the caps came off. <laughs> but again, OK, yeah, they went back again. Let's try it again. And on the next missions, in the 80s, finally, all the caps came off. And one of them just landed under the drilling machine was supposed to take samples. Yeah, bad luck. Uh, just to end with something positive, uh, this was really successful. And these, these were the very first, and by the way, the very last colorful images from the surface of, of the Venus. The next one, I will talk about REM5, which is the very, very successful European heavy lift rocket. And by the way, this is the same one, uh, what uh, lifted up off and, and uh, lifted up James Webb very, very successfully and very precisely. But its maiden flight, the very first flight, was not that successful. What I mean is, yeah, it, it lifted up, uh, it, it left the launch pad, and after 40 seconds, it very suddenly wanted to make a 90 degree turn. And believe me, if you're a rocket speeding with multiple times of the sound, it's not a good idea. So uh, they had to send the command, what you do not want to send ever, the self-destruction command. So it blew up the rocket. So what, what happened here? Oh, no, no, no. Small mistakes, right? Uh, so what happened here? So there was a, a very tiny software bug in the onboard computer. And uh, the one, there was one, one value which reads its maximum, and after that, the computer got confused. And then, you know, big fireball. And yeah. This was the most expensive software bug ever in the history of humankind. But yeah, just to end, end with something positive, once I went to, to Belgium, 
a company in Belgium, and they, because they were providing some of the electronics uh, for James Webb, and, and also they were providing some of the electronics of, of the LVM5, and they very, very proudly showed their laboratories. And, and then I saw uh, a piece of mangled and burnt electronics. And then I asked what it, what it was. Yeah, that's one of the electronics uh, from the very first launch of, of uh, Ariane 5. Uh, yeah, I know, uh, it was a big failure. No, 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 no. It wasn't for us. How you mean? Actually, this is the self-destruction electronics. And <laughs> we sent the command, we tested it live, and it successfully worked. <laughs> so the next one is the Hipparchos mission. This was a very in interesting mission. And astronomers want, want to know the distances of the stars, and this is... Yeah, it, it works similar to your, your eyes, but instead of your right and, and left eye, it measures from two different points of, of around the orbit of, of, of the sun, once in July, once in January, and the, from the two, two angles, you can measure how far it is. And usually what you have, you can see some bell shape, something attached to the satellite, and this is the last stage. This is to make the final orbit. Uh, possible. And uh, there was again a very small medical failure, and it stayed off. So it left the satellite onto a wrong orbit, but, okay, let's end with a positive way. This story, after a lot of work, they managed to, to, to get this, this uh, mission successful, and we were, all the astronomers were quite happy. A very similar story. They had a very similar last stage rocket, and, and uh, the engineer just recognized quite late in the project that it's enough to just send a small software message to turn this engine on, even in the laboratory. And somehow it sounds scary for some engineers to be in the same room. Why, by mistake, they turn it on. So, what, what they did, okay, it's what, it was late in the project, but not that late. So they made, they introduced a safety switch. So they could, yeah, turn it off during the, the ground testing, and of, of course all the ground testing went well and very safe. And uh, then the big day came, and uh, the rocket uh, left uh, the surface of Earth, and there was a big moment to send this, this small command, software command, and nothing happened. <laughs> you can guess why. It was off. <laughs> and so it was quite late in the project, they had to modify a lot of documents, and they did, except one, the to-do list before lunch. <laughs> so the next one, I'm telling you a, a story about Mars Climate Orbiter. This was also a very important mission to relay data from the surface of the Mars and also make measurements. And it went quite good. It was reaching the Mars and then smashed into it. And so what happened here? You know people, when they are working for a long time together, they are just asking that, Joe, how much? Uh, it's 20, thank you. And that's it. But in these cases, you make it sure that both of them are talking in the same units. <laughs> so, what happened here? One of the onboard electronics or measurement device was measuring everything in meter and telling the ground stations in meter why the ground stations was accepting and receiving, thinking it was in feet. So during these, these last 14, 15 years, uh, several times I was asked that, yeah, I know that you work on something really cool. What's that? And with a very big smile on my face, yeah, they're just, it's uh, James West Space Telescope. James who? <laughs> you will know it later on. Uh, do you know Hubble? Yes. It's the second one. <laughs> so let's talk about Hubble. It did not start very well. Um, 
It was, so its primary mirror, big giant prime mirror, was the most precisely polished to a wrong shape. And yeah, why? So if you have something most precise ever, then you have to have instrument most precise ever. And there is, there is an instrument called null corrector, and this, is, this instrument is measuring where, where you want to polish more uh, the surface. And this was a custom-built, very new, really precise one but assembled incorrectly. There was a very small shim under a very small bolt, which was misplaced, therefore giving the wrong numbers to the polishing machines. And yeah, this is how it looked like. Astronomers were not happy. But again, let's end this story uh, in a good way, very positive. So fortunately, Hubble was designed that way, that it could accept, it, it was planned to have service missions, to extend its lifetime, and, and every time when a service mission came, uh, upgrade uh, instruments. So, of course, the very first service mission was about to uh, correct the bad eyesight of Hubble with lenses, let's say. And at the end, of course, Hubble was for more than 30 years, have been and still is one of the most successful space telescope ever. But after this success, scientists started to think, OK, let's uh, build something, which is, uh, they had just started dreaming. So let's build one, which is a lot larger. And OK, we are just dreaming. And sharper and better than Hubble. But wait, uh, larger. Hubble is already that large, what it could fit into a rocket. So, uh, and it was the size of a big bus. So it means that larger means like the size of a tennis court or something like that. But there is no rocket it, it could fit in. So, but yeah, no, no problem. You, you fold it and unfold it in space. And it does not have to be that precise, so yeah, it will work. We are ju just dreaming, okay? But even the, the primary mirrors does not fit into any rocket. So yeah, the same trick, right? So you fold it in and then unfold it in space with a precision, optical precision, which means uh, one ten, something like ten thousands of a width of a human hair. Okay, so this is where it starts to be more sci-fi than real. And but okay, still dreaming. It's just a dream telescope. So unfolding means a lot of mechanisms. But yeah, we just learned that mechanisms never fail. It's not a, not a concern. They always work, right? Not a big deal. Uh, if it's not enough, make it infrared. Infrared means that technically you have to cool it down really cold. And uh, at, at these temperatures, um, a lot of materials, they just act differently and more brittle. Um, and even you have to test it in, on ground at these cold temperatures. Okay, okay, no problem. It's just a dream. And make one instrument even colder. So then you need a mechanical pumping, some, some cooler, what never flown before. And yeah, it's another mechanism, no problem. But if you have such a design, you have to launch it very far away from, from Earth. It's called Lagrange 2. And it's uh, something like five, five times the distance of the moon instead of Hubble's only just 500, five, 600 kilometers. It's a lot, lot more distance. So if you have a similar rocket, then it has to be this big, but half the weight of Hubble. Um, can you see any problem? Um, 
But at this distance, yeah, no service mission. Everything has to work perfectly. Unfolding several hundreds of steps. Fail one, meaning failing the whole mission. And of course, it worked. And it's named James Webb Space Telescope, which already showed us the most beautiful pictures ever, the most beautiful secrets of the universe, the most distant galaxies ever seen by humankind, colliding galaxies, never seen details of our planets, and also planets around other stars called exoplanets. We even could see the atmosphere of these planets. We could, we could see water and carbon dioxide on their atmospheres, and maybe sometimes even oxygen, which would be the, the, the sign of, of life. And these were just the very first month of its lifetime. This dream was so big, so complex, but it's not a dream anymore. Thanks to the 10,000 scientists and engineers, decades of their lives, working really hard, testing, planning. I'm Urshun Odetre, astronomer and physicist, and I'm lucky to be one of them. We dreamed big, and this success was worth the risks. Dream even bigger. It's your turn. Thank you.